What's up, everybody? It's Yonk here with what we know so far about Deus Ex Mankind Divided. The following information comes from the latest issue of Game Informer, which goes into extensive details about the upcoming game. I'll be providing a summary of all the important bits of information in regards to story and gameplay, but for the full scoop, be sure to head over to Game Informer and subscribe to their magazines to read the full article. The article begins by providing a synopsis of the game's plot, which reads as follows. After surviving a catastrophic terrorist attack, Adam Jensen returns to a world crippled by strife. A fraction of the planet's wealthy elite control the majority of the globe's flow of money and technology, keeping the marginalized members of society under their corporate heel. Jensen joins a covert government-sponsored task force that outfits him with a fresh array of transhuman augmentations in order to combat a new breed of terrorism that has arisen in the midst of this new world order. He's better equipped than ever to tackle the challenges laid out before him, which is good because the last time Jensen tried to save the world, he failed. So in short, Jensen has stepped up his shit for the next threat. The article then proceeds by talking about the developer's goals with Mankind Divided, which is to create the most ambitious Deus Ex to date, hopefully one that surpasses the original classic. One aspect in which Human Revolution was heavily scrutinized for was its boss battles, which forced players into combat rather than allowing players to choose their methods. The reason for this was that Eidos Montreal outsourced boss battles to another studio because of time constraints. Now, this was somewhat remedied in the director's cut of the game, which was released a little over two years after the original, but it might have been too late by then. But with Mankind Divided, Eidos Montreal will take care of the boss battles. They are well aware of the issues with boss battles and human revolution, and will strive to ensure that they don't repeat the same mistake again. The story of Mankind Divided picks up in the year 2029, two years after Human Revolution. In the latter, Adam Jensen had tracked down a secret group known as the Illuminati, whose aim was to activate a signal that would cause transhumans across the globe to go insane and attack anyone in sight. In many ways, they succeeded, leaving Adam Jensen, and by extension the player, to make a choice between revealing the ugly truth behind the attacks and in turn ban augmentations, manipulate evidence to ensure the continued development of augmentations, or destroy the Pankea facility in the interest of global peace and let humanity decide for itself. Idas Montreal would not say which ending is canon, but they are looking at elements from all three endings to set the cultural backdrop for Mankind Divided. The Game Informer article did note, however, that in the official Deus Ex lore, Pankea was destroyed and crashed into the Arctic Ocean. The disaster in Human Revolution resulted in blame being shifted to augmented people for the terrorist attack. Transhumans were quickly labeled as second-class citizens and were segregated from the rest of society. According to the developers, Jensen feels partly responsible for this outcome, making redemption a big part of the story. This is why in Mankind Divided, Jensen will set out to track down and eliminate the organization that has been orchestrating these events, namely the Illuminati. Jensen can't do it alone, however, which is why he joins Task Force 29, a new branch of Interpol that specializes in preventing augmentation-based terror attacks. Joining this task force comes with resourceful benefits like new augmentations and weapons, which Jensen will make full use of in the field to track down the Illuminati. However, after the events of Human Revolution, Jensen no longer knows who he can trust, which is why his loyalties will be divided in this game. While running missions with Task Force 29, he will also be feeding intel to another covert organization called the Juggernaut Collective, which is a group of loosely affiliated hackers, activists, and international spies who have known for a long time of the existence of the elusive Illuminati. The goal of this organization is to expose the Illuminati and their manipulations, which falls in line with Jensen's own agenda. On a gameplay front, these two factions will give Jensen, and in turn the players, conflicting mission goals, with neither faction being completely trustworthy. This is likely where the game's morality and cause and effect system will be implemented. Like in previous games, players can expect to make choices that will have consequences in the outcome of the story. As the game progresses, Jensen will have to decide which faction he will ultimately side with, who to trust, and what to believe, even when it seems like everyone's lying to him. 
Task Force 29 and the Juggernaut Collective may be the two main factions that drive the story forward, but Jensen will also be interacting with other parties and people in need. This is where side quests come in. The article talks more about side quests later on as they describe the demo they saw of one of the game's early main missions. This main mission involves Jensen being sent by Task Force 29 to infiltrate a facility on the outskirts of Prague called Utilek Station. Utilek Station was originally used as a temporary housing for Prague's working class, but it has been turned into a camp to segregate transhumans. Prior to the Og incident in Human Revolution, Prague used to welcome augmented people from all over the world, with the government actually offering incentives for augmented workers. But after the Og incident, that notion quickly changed. The event left a huge scar in the minds of the people, forcing the government to take drastic measures. This brings us to Mankind Divided. Prague has been turned into what the developers call the Og Ghetto, taking the Utilek station and turning it into an area where you have to live if you are an Og. They didn't go as far as to label it a concentration camp, but undocumented and augmented citizens are forced to live there. So anyway, Jensen is sent to infiltrate Utilek Station to extract the figurehead of an organization called the Augmented Rights Coalition, or the ARC. His name is Talos Rucker, a humanitarian aid worker to transhumans who became vocal about how society has mistreated augmented people like himself. The developers state in the article that the ARC and Talos Rucker are considered a terrorist organization, but players will discover that it's not as black and white as that. As players talk to some of the ARC members, they will discover that at the end of the day, all they're doing is what they feel they need to do to fight for augmented rights. They will feel like a community who is taking care of each other. They try to grow their own food and give it to the population. They strike deals with the police to get more medicine, and they try to ensure the safety for the augmented and segregated. Despite their nature as extremists, they are simply fighting for their rights. What they are to you will depend on your point of view on the world, society, and culture of mankind divided. Jensen eventually reaches Utilek Station by plane, which drops him off near one of Utilek Station's social hubs. The article goes into extensive detail in describing the open area, talking about shops that line up the streets that sell everything from fresh fruit to mechanical parts electrical pipes and cables that wind their way throughout, a tower at the center of the city that displays the news, along with interactions between NPCs that occur throughout, such as police officers arresting a young transhuman, or groups of humans complaining that there isn't enough food. The overall claustrophobic nature of what feels like an indoor city has earned it the nickname Golem City. Golem City is presented by the European Union as a place where augmented people can be together and safe, but this supposed haven is run by corrupt officials, by controlling and purposely creating a shortage of a drug called neuropozine, which transhumans need to prevent their human bodies from rejecting their mechanical implants, they in turn control the residents. The article describes Jensen walking through Golem City and encountering a number of individuals with requests. For example, at one point he passes by a doctor, who asks him to keep an eye out on extra supplies of the drug. Many people like these will be scattered throughout the world. The developer's goal is to ensure that mankind divided side quests have an impact on a playthrough of the main story, rather than acting as missions outside of the main story. Different interactions with different NPCs early on may result in different scenarios and developments for different missions in later parts of the game. The developers see these side quests as mini-stories that feed into the main story and as a way to explore the main themes of the game more deeply rather than as a means to cheaply extend the game's length. The player of the article's demo decides to simply proceed with the main mission at hand, however, pushing deeper into Golem City in hopes to track down Rucker. But like in previous Deus Ex games, missions can be tackled in a variety of ways. For this particular mission, the article described that Jensen can choose between meeting up with one of his informants, who was recently taken in by the police for questioning, or he can meet his wife, who may give up information about meeting her husband, or may straight up give clues about Rucker. Jensen can also choose to cause a scene with the police, although this will result in the informant's wife running away, which means he'll lose that opportunity. Jensen can also choose to sneak into the informant's house and hack his laptop to gain the needed information. Hell, if players get lucky, they might even stumble upon a shortcut to ARC's hideout on their own. According to the developers, you can go full combat or full stealth at any part in the game. 
On his way to Rucker, Jensen will encounter armed enemies getting in the way. Naturally, it's up to the player to decide which approach to take. They could avoid them altogether, they could stealthily take them down, or they could go guns blazing. This is where the article takes some time to describe the gameplay of Mankind Divided, starting with Jensen's arsenal. In terms of character progression, Mankind Divided will borrow heavily from Human Revolution. Players will find or receive Praxis Kits that can then be used to unlock new augmentations, and then experience points can be used to upgrade these augmentations. Now, what's cool is that Mankind Divided will feature twice as many augmentations as Human Revolution, including tech abilities for combat, stealth, hacking, and social interactions. These tech abilities are all mapped to various parts of Jensen's augmented body. On Jensen's right hand, you will find the Tesla, which are little darts that pop out of Jensen's knuckles, allowing him to tag nearby enemies and silently disable them. This tech ability can eventually be upgraded to take out up to four enemies at once. On his left hand, you will find the Nanoblade, which makes a return from Human Revolution for takedowns. A new feature to this weapon is that these blades can now be fired to take enemies down from a distance. Like a powerful crossbow, this ability can be used to pin enemies to walls, and an upgrade will eventually allow Jensen to charge the blade so that it explodes into a shower of tiny fragments that can take out a small room of enemies. On his left forearm, you'll find the Peps Gun, which is a barrel that shoots a concussive, non-lethal blast that can knock enemies off their feet and incapacitate them. Jensen can then follow up by stealing their weapon, killing them, or fleeing before they recover. On his body, you'll find an augmentation called Titan Shield, which covers Jensen's body with a thin layer of tough particles that greatly reduce damage taken from enemy fire until the energy bar depletes, essentially turning Jensen into a walking tank. On the legs, you will find the Icarus landing system, which also makes a return from Human Revolution. Like before, enhancing this augmentation will allow Jensen to fall from greater heights without taking damage. But in Mankind Divided, it can be upgraded to allow Jensen to dash horizontally. This can be used in a variety of ways, whether it be putting some distance between you and the enemy, or to cover gaps in the floor. The legs also feature the Silent Run system, which will allow Jensen to move quicker while making less sound. This can be combined with cloaking to make Jensen a complete ghost. Finally, we have various augmentations attached to Jensen's head. First up is Casey, which allows Jensen to analyze the mental state of targeted individuals. This augmentation is essentially intended to enhance Jensen's conversation skills, allowing him to more easily persuade and coax NPCs. We then have the Mark and Track system, which allows Jensen to tag enemies and monitor their movements in a similar fashion to Far Cry or Ground Zeroes. The augmentation can also be enhanced to allow Jensen to look into a target's pockets and see what can be looted off of them. This can even be combined with Jensen's final augmentation, Smart Vision. It's similar to Batman's Detective Vision in the Arkham games, allowing Jensen to see enemies through walls. It does consume a lot of energy, however, so players will have to use this ability sparingly. Now, something really cool is that players can combine Smart Vision with Mark and Track to see what targets are holding through walls. The article also describes a number of augmentations they witnessed in a demo. Hacking makes a return with a new Remote Hack augmentation which allowed the player of the demo to gain access to a shortcut leading through the vents of the ARC complex. Towards the end of the article, there was also mention of the Icarus propulsion system to boost Jensen's movement speed. There will likely be more augmentations in the final game that have yet to be mentioned, but these are what we know so far. As for overall gameplay, the developer's intention isn't to reinvent the wheel, but rather to take the foundation that Human Revolution established and improve upon it. For example, stealth will remain largely the same from Human Revolution, as the developers felt that what they had was pretty solid. Now, something new to this game is the augmentation wheel. Through a menu, players can assign augmentations to a wheel that can be brought up using the D-pad. It's a feature that streamlines the game's controls and makes it easier for Jensen to use his abilities. Another big change is how augmentations consume energy. It'll work very similarly to Dishonored in that abilities will consume a fixed amount of energy, but energy will regenerate up to a certain point if abilities aren't used. To fully refill the energy gauge, players will have to rely on biocells. This change was implemented to encourage players to feel more liberal about using their augmentations. By using all of Jensen's abilities and new gameplay mechanics, the player of the demo eventually reaches Rucker's office. Rucker wasn't surprised to see Jensen, and expressed that he was grateful that most of his men were left alive. 
which is of course a dialogue that may or may not be there depending on the player's actions. Jensen then replies that he is being taken in for questioning, but Rucker believes that the government will make him disappear if he tags along. How this conversation plays out is up to the player. In one scenario, Rucker may get frustrated, resulting in Rucker pushing an emergency button that calls for backup, forcing Jensen to fight. In another scenario, Rucker might agree to tag along with some persuasion, and may even go as far as giving Jensen access to Rucker's personal safe. In the demo, the conversation proceeded smoothly, although Rucker eventually begins to convulse as his augmentations begin to malfunction, leading him to his death. Apparently, somebody was listening in on their conversation and didn't like what they heard. But before Jensen can do anything more, the guards in the area who heard Rucker's loud death are alerted of his presence, forcing him into combat. Now, something that the developers realized was that people who prefer to play Human Revolution stealthily enjoyed the game more than those who preferred to play Guns Blazing. They recognized that combat was one of the weakest aspects of Human Revolution, so they have spent a great deal of time to ensure that Mankind Divided's gunplay will be as rewarding and entertaining as stealth. Now, one new feature is Jensen's ability to customize his weapons on the spot. He can look down at his weapon and bring up an augmented reality interface that players can use to change weapon settings on the fly, from the type of ammo, firing pattern, scope, and more. Once lock and loaded, a useful augmentation for combat is the Titan Shield, which allows Jensen to receive significantly less damage from enemy fire. This augmentation was included because the developers wanted to add aggressive augmentations that would allow players to take more risks and be more daring in combat. Now, interesting to note is that players won't be the only ones with these kinds of powers. As the game advances, expect to encounter enemies who may have similar abilities like Jensen's Titan Shield. With enemies now having not only different weapons, but also different augmentations and powers, the developers are confident that Mankind Divided will have enough enemy variety to keep players on their toes. They also noted that enemy AI has been enhanced significantly for this game, so players can expect to find themselves constantly adapting their strategy on the fly. As the player makes his escape, a number of other things were mentioned about the game. In one section, the article mentions the player using an EMP grenade to temporarily disable a mobile defense turret. There was also mention of a holographic image displaying Jensen's last known position. This sounds very similar to what you can find in the most recent Splinter Cell games. There was also mention of interactive environments during combat, with one example being Jensen shooting at wooden rafters to send a bunch of barrels tumbling down on top of enemies. Jensen finally manages to escape and make it to the dropship, and right before ARC soldiers can go for a kill shot, a man by the name of Viktor Marchenko stops them and lets Jensen go free. As Jensen departs, Jensen and Viktor give each other a knowing stare before finally going their separate ways. Ida's Montreal wasn't willing to say much about Viktor, except that he was one of Rucker's lieutenants. Game Informer's article suggests that perhaps with Rucker now dead, Victor will be taking his place as the ARC's leader. We do get a glimpse of this character in the trailer, and if there is one thing that's clear, it's that this man's cause is to free the transhumans from oppression. And that's where the demo ends, as well as the article. There were also a few other tidbits of information mentioned throughout the article. For example, when asked whether Human Revolution's save file would carry over to Mankind Divided, Ida's Montreal responded that this won't be the case this time, since they didn't expect to get another shot at Deus Ex after Human Revolution, so they didn't plan for a save file transfer system. However, they did mention that the team is planning a franchise now, so it's highly likely that Mankind Divided's save file will transfer to its sequel, whatever it may be. The studio was also asked about rumors of a Deus Ex MMO, which began with a trademark filed for the title Deus Ex Universe. Ida's Montreal's reply was that they have no plans for a Deus Ex MMO, and that the title Deus Ex Universe is simply a label for cross-media promotions such as books, graphic novels, and mobile apps. So there you have it folks, everything we know so far about Deus Ex Mankind Divided. I highly recommend you check out Game Informer's article, but if you just want a summary of everything, you have come to the right place. Now I'm really excited about this game, so I'll be covering it as much as I can. So to be further updated on Deus Ex Mankind Divided, stay tuned on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.